Hi guys, welcome to the Newton's Laws tutorial. There are three laws of motion that were described by Sir Isaac Newton way back in the early 1700s. He was a really smart guy and he's pretty famous even today because of his incredible insight into the way that things move. His laws are just descriptions of reality. Remember, laws aren't like theories. They don't explain anything. They just tell us what we see. Here's what Newton saw. He saw that if we have an object that's resting on a table, it's not going anywhere unless we give it a force. He would have said that there were the forces of gravity acting on it down here. And he didn't call it this, but we now call it the normal force pushing back up against gravity. And those two forces kept it in balance top to bottom. So it's not moving because there's no net or unbalanced force acting on it. However, if you were to set this box in motion, if you were to give it a push to the right, you might think to yourself, well, it's going to stop eventually. A lot of people think that if they give it a force to the right, an applied force, that the box stops moving because it's running out of applied force. You take your hand away and eventually that force runs out. That is not correct. Forces, once they're applied, continue to be in effect even after you take the force away. The only thing that stops the box from moving to the right is going to be a force in the other direction. And in this case, that's going to be friction. Since we live in a world where we can't get rid of friction, we can't get rid of gravity, to us it always seems like objects have this tendency to come to rest after a while. But they don't actually. If you were to take this box into outer space and give it a shove, it would just keep going forever because there's really no other forces on it out there to slow it down. This brings us to Newton's first law. Okay, the first law says an object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest until acted upon by a net force. Net force is a fancy way of saying a, a um, leftover force, an unbalanced force. So objects will keep doing whatever they were doing until some new force comes along and makes them change what they're doing. This tendency of an object to resist changes in its motion has a name. It's called inertia. And sometimes the first law is called the law of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist changes in its motion. This is an important physics definition. All objects resist changes in their motion. Your inertia increases with your mass. This is not a coincidence. The more the more mass there is, the more stuff there is in the object. So mass and inertia go up together. Mass has the same definition as the word inertia. Everybody thinks of mass as being weight, but they're not the same thing. Your mass is also your tendency of an object to resist changes in motion. Your weight, on the other hand, is a force that you only experience if you're in a gravitational field. Here on Earth, we never leave the gravitational field of the planet, and so our mass and our weight seem to be the same number. But if you were to go into outer space and float around where there's low gravity and very little friction and all that, your mass and your weight would be different. You'd weigh a lot less far from the Earth's gravitational field, but your mass would be the same. You would still resist being moved about the same. So if I were to push you in outer space, it would take the same amount of force as it used to take here on Earth to get you moving. The difference would be, of course, there are no other forces in space to counteract my force on you. So it may feel a little bit easier. So that's the first law. What about the other two? The second one seems hard at first because it's an equation. Newton's second law is F equals MA. F stands for force which I will write in here. M stands for mass, and A stands for acceleration, which I'm going to run out of room to write, so take my word for it. It stands for acceleration. This picture helps explain this equation, though. It's really simple and obvious. It takes more force to move an object of greater mass, because if I want to accelerate this mass, I've got to pull more than if I want to accelerate this mass. Really easy, right? Common sense. 
So F equals MA is extremely useful. We can use it to figure out all sorts of things that are actually much more surprising than this fact. This fact, the fact that it takes more force to push or pull something that has more mass, is kind of obvious. But it's not so obvious in certain situations. For example, here's a completely ridiculous example of Newton's second law. It turns out that if I were to go to a location where there is no air and drop an elephant and a mouse side by side, why I would do this, no one knows. If I were to do that, it turns out that they would race towards the ground at exactly the same rate. They would pick up about 9.8 meters per second of speed for every second that they're falling. We learned this when we did the FAIR test lab. At least I hope we learned it. Sometimes people are resistant to learning this fact because it just doesn't seem like it can be true. It feels like the elephant ought to fall a lot faster than the mouse, but it doesn't work out that way. That's because of the, the formula F equals MA. You see, the force here is the force of gravity, and acceleration is the acceleration caused by gravity. Why does the acceleration due to gravity always stay the same? Well, you'll see I've, I've rearranged the formula down here so that it's acceleration equals force divided by mass. What happens is the force of gravity increases as your mass goes up. So a large thing, like an elephant, has a lot of gravitational force acting on it, which is why this F here is really big. And a small thing, like a mouse, has a small amount of force, which is why I used a much smaller F for my mouse. So they're pulled by gravity totally differently, which is why it feels to you like the elephant ought to fall faster. He's being pulled harder. But the same thing that makes the force of gravity greater on the elephant also makes the elephant much harder to move. It resists being moved because of its inertia or its mass. It has a large mass, so it takes more force to move it. The uh, um, Mouse, sorry, forgot what that thing was called. The mouse, by comparison, has a much smaller mass. And so you wind up needing less force to move the mouse the same rate. You could do the math on this. And I originally had this slide going on for like six minutes while I calculated all this math over here in the corner. But the bottom line is this. You get 9.8 meters per second squared of acceleration from either of these equations, because you're going to get a bigger force divided by a bigger mass if you're a bigger object, or a smaller force divided by a smaller mass if you're a smaller object. So that's one of the interesting things that we can sort of figure out from this cool equation, F equals MA. Let's go on to the third law. Newton's third law is sometimes referred to as the law of action-reaction. It says that for every action force, there's an equal but opposite reaction force. In this diagram, I'm showing a person jumping off of a boat. If the person pushes off against the boat, he's gonna go to the right, like this red arrow shows this way, but the boat is gonna go this way. And that's because at the same time that the person is putting a force on the boat, the boat is putting a force on the person. And the two objects move in opposite directions from each other because of that. This is what we call an action-reaction pair. Action-reaction pairs always involve different objects, for example, a person and a boat, but they're always the same force. In both cases, this is an applied force or one of the electromagnetic forces. So the electromagnetic force on the person is equal to the electromagnetic force on the boat. They're pushing each other with equal amounts of force it's easier to move the person than the boat, which is why the person goes splashing into the water and the boat just rocks a little bit back and forth. Let's look at this in another example. Gravity is pulling this person downward. You might think that the reaction force is the normal force of the Earth pushing upwards, but it's not because action-reaction forces are always on different objects but they're always the same force. The normal force is an electromagnetic force, so it can't be the reaction force to a gravitational force. The reaction force of you being pulled down by the Earth is the Earth being pulled up by you. Holy shnikes, that's weird. 
In other words, you're yanking on the earth with the same amount of force that the earth is yanking on you. Guess who's going to win this tug of war? That's right, the earth is way bigger. So even though there's equal forces going on here, you are the one who moves towards the earth. The earth doesn't move towards you. That's pretty strange, right? You don't think of your force of gravity on you as having a reaction force of you pulling on the earth, but you do. There's another action-reaction pair happening here, and that's the action-reaction pair of the normal forces. The earth is pushing up on you, so there's a normal force in that direction, and you are pushing down on the earth. The mistake that almost everybody makes is that they think that the two forces that are pairs are these two forces. Gravity's pulling this object down, the earth is pushing it back up. They seem like a natural pair, and they are two balanced forces. They're balancing each other out, but they are not action-reaction pairs. The pairs are the ones that are the same force acting on opposite objects. So remember, it's the two yellow forces that are an action-reaction pair, and the two red forces that are an action-reaction pair. Always be careful of that when you're identifying forces, like say on quizzes. Okay, let's sum up. Okay, to sum up, here are the three laws. You've got the law of inertia, right up here, which says that objects at rest stay at rest, objects in motion stay in motion, unless an unbalanced net force acts on them. You've got the second law, which is the equation, F equals MA. A force is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. And the third law, which says that all forces come in pairs, so for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And remember, force pairs act on different objects. So we're going to write different object. But they are the same force. So the action force is the Earth pulls on you. The reaction force is you pull on the Earth. So the Earth and you are different objects, but the force is the same. It's gravity in both cases. Okay, see you guys in class.